Hey everybody, welcome to the Misty Mushroom. I'm Julie, and this is our farm. Oh, they're everywhere. I do with all of these today's topic the Asiatic day flower also known as Camelina communis for the scientific name in China it's known as the duckfoot herb Yashikao in Japan the dew herb Soyukusa and it is indigenous to Eastern Asia uh, introduced to the Americas, it is now considered to be an invasive weed. It loves moist soil. So up here in northwest Ohio with the black swamp, it is very cozy. Now, it is quite easy to pull up out of areas due to its shallow root system, but it does seed very quickly, and it spreads. So it is something that can snuff out a lot of native plants. And if you get it on your property, there's two modes of thinking about it. You can either completely eradicate it or you can utilize it in a small portion of your garden instead of completely destroying it. Um, it has a lot of different uses to it. Commonly, um, it is used for food. And I'll touch on that topic in a little bit. Um, it is also quite useful if you have ducks like myself, or any other type of livestock, they love to eat this. It has the flavor of peas. And with that, you can pull it and give it directly to them. However, um, you must be cautious. Because of this plant's ability to bioaccumulate toxins out of the soil, it has been shown to pull out uh, heavy metals from areas like old copper mines and to help to absorb those so where they can be um, pulled and destroyed and the soil gets improved through time with their influence. So you do want to be careful of if you are pulling this to consume it where you are getting it from. Hence also growing it on your property if it's already established utilizing that for food. In um, an example of bioaccumulation, you can find in the garden most commonly with the tobacco hornworm. If it's too far north for you to grow tobacco, uh, the growing season is much shorter, but it is doable. Uh, if you have tomatoes, uh, tomato hornworm also picks up the toxins from the plant. This is why if you have lizards or small creatures that would normally feed on a caterpillar of that size, you don't want to feed them to your critter because they will harm them and potentially kill them. Uh, tobacco hornworms gather nicotine from the plant and so therefore they're very toxic. Um, with the flowers of the Asiatic day flower the flowers themselves produce a dye when they are squished. And you can utilize this, however, the plants themselves produce a flower that it only opens for one day. You'd have to have quite a number of them in order to produce enough dye to do anything with. And varieties have been created that have larger leaves uh, for the flower, so that way their dye properties are greater. Um, as for any commercial papers, they do not do well. Um, they do better with fabric and any paper that is constructed out of more natural fibers. The watercolor paper is perfect and also full cotton will absorb the dye. Um, when it is used to dye, the, uh, the pigment is often used first 
on a garment and then uh, a batik process is utilized and another dye is put on top. The dye itself can fade with heavy sunlight unless you have um, great experience in dyeing uh, with natural products. You'll have trouble trying to retain that dye. However, that does remain to be a very fun way to show children how to identify the plant by squishing it, by looking at the color of it. Um, it is a very entertaining way to educate others about it. Um, the pigment has been used historically on Japanese ukiyo prints, and that's that's nice, but in more recent times they've switched over to other blue dyes that are uh, stronger, have a longer lasting power. Medicinally, uh, one of the great things about this plant is that there's a lot of properties in the flowers themselves, but also in the leaves and the plant. Um, not sure about the root system of the Asiatic day flower, but everything else is edible. The flowers, the tiny little peas attached to the flower uh, from the seeds that have not yet formed are edible and taste very nice. And then also the leaves are very nice. Medicinally, there's a lot of qualities that have been stated to say that it reduces fever and swelling and helps to promote better uh, urine so that you can reduce blood pressure. Um, it's also been stated it, it helps with sore throats, um, even a tonsillitis. Um, the biggest thing with this is the type of acid that is found in it that is a antibacterial and um, it has an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and antimicrobial um, activity in it. It can be shown to suppress tumor growth and therefore it is one of the plants that is considered to be a um, cancer reducer or avoidance. Very important for you if you have it on your property. Um, there's really not too much harm in having some as a stir fry and if it helps to reduce your issues and your suffering then that's something that you should certainly capitalize on. And any type of Biochemistry is sadly unused, and this is one of the biggest examples of how we can take a weed from a property and use it for something that has more importance. Uh, the other plants that go along with a cancer preventative that you can find um, is borage and the broadleaf plantain, those both create uh, mucilage. It's the gooiness of the plant, and it helps to remove irritations of mucous membranes. It forms a protective film. So with that, these plants, which are very easy to grow, and the plantains, which you can find as a weed, along with the Asiatic dayflower, um, have been shown to be beneficial. Now regarding food, the Asiatic daylily is very easy to harvest. Um, you bend down the stalks like an asparagus, and the more fibrous it is, the less desirable it is to eat. So you bend the stalk, and it will break, and then you harvest it. Very easy to do, and also that maintains the plant to produce more. Our small collection of the Asiatic day flower are found underneath our air conditioning unit, which produces some water that is constantly dripping down 
and so they love it there. But they have tried to seed and spread throughout the garden. And I pull those weeds and give those directly to the ducks. They may not initially go for it, but after it's set there, they go wild over it. Again, with the food, you can harvest the immature seeds. Those are the most delicious. However, it does take a lot of them. It's a nice trail food to eat those. Uh, you can't eat it, the parts that are above ground raw, uh, but you can also cook them. You can steam them. You can use them in a stir fry. You can even blanch them and freeze them for later. If you're getting close to winter, uh, getting close to fall, you can go on ahead and harvest them in a big way, blanch them, freeze them, have them over the winter as a constant supply. And I'm going to have mine with some rice that I've done in the steam pot along with some vegetables and herbs from the garden. I've chosen lemon balm, chives. I've also grabbed some lovage. And I nabbed up some bell peppers and some carrots along with some dill. I'm going to go ahead and cook those up with just a little bit of butter, a little bit of salt, and serve that alongside the rice. Cooking rice in a pressure cooker, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Two cups of rice to two cups of water. If you didn't rinse the rice beforehand, you add a couple tablespoons extra of water. Cook it for about five minutes if it's white rice. If it needs longer, you can cook it for a little bit longer and let it naturally release.